Hi everyone, this is Top 3D Shop, and in this video, we will tell you about the Shining 3D Einstar 3D Scanner as well as do some testing to see what the device is capable of. Shining 3D is a China-based company that has been around in the area of high-precision 3D digitizing and printing since 2004. The manufacturer is known to provide affordable yet efficient high-tech solutions, being one of the key players in this field. The products by the company are used in a variety of areas, including industry, healthcare, and education. Here you can see the specifications of the Einstar 3D Scanner. Einstar is a new model in the company's lineup of budget-friendly scanning equipment. The device employs the combination of structured light and laser technologies using infrared VIXEL projectors, which is also extremely useful for face digitizing. The scanner comes in a small box, with the package consisting of a convenient carrying and storage case, which in turn contains the scanner itself, a data cable for connection to a computer, and a power adapter. The 12-volt power supply allows the scanner to work from a car's onboard network or other power sources, which makes it possible to use the device on trips and in nature. In the pocket is a set of spare markers and a quick start guide. The separate compartment contains a special glass plate with markers for calibrating the scanner, and there's also a shoulder strap to carry the case. A standard power cord for the adapter and a cloth for cleaning the scanner's optics are also included in the box. The carrying case is convenient and practical, also protecting the device from falling and external influences. So the supply package is not particularly rich, but hence we have an affordable price for the product itself. For desktop scanning, a turntable and a tripod can be purchased separately if you don't already have ones. The body of the scanner has a convenient shape for hand use. It is plastic with a protective silicone cover. There is a wristlet that will prevent the device from falling. At the top of the backside are the control buttons and indicators for scanning modes. The weight of the device without peripherals is about 600 grams. All this allows using the scanner outdoors. However, it can also be mounted on tripods. If we remove the silicone cover, we can see a standard M7 threaded mount closed by a plug. The 3D scanner is equipped with built-in cameras, two of which are stereo cameras and the third is RGB, which makes the device capable of capturing the color of scanned items and allows you to work with art objects when the project requires colors. As mentioned above, the Einstar uses the technology of scanning with white structured light paired with infrared, invisible to the human eye. As opposed to professional scanners, there is no visible representation of rhythmically repeated patterns with lines. Located at a certain distance from each other, the Einstar's cameras capture the distorted reflection of this light thanks to which the cloud point is determined. The type of laser is Class 1, which means it is eye safe for the user and others in all modes of the device. The white light is turned on when it is necessary to determine the color of the object's elements. This is when the medium color camera is used. The guide from the package is of an introductory nature. It recommends downloading a user manual from the official site where everything is described in detail. The device is easy to prepare for operation. Just connect the main cable to the scanner by aligning the red marks on the socket and the plug. A special connector with fixation ensures firm contact while the cable has a soft silicone insulation. The power adapter is connected to the main cable and the power cord to the adapter. The 2.0 version is employed for the USB connector. After the device is connected to the computer, we can proceed to install the software. In 3D scanning, the processing of data captured by the scanner is done by means of software whose operation depends on the performance of the computer being used. Here you can see the minimum and recommended system requirements for the Einstar. Shining 3D recommends evaluating the multi-thread performance of the computer where you plan to process scans with the CPU-Z utility before use. The test should show at least 4,000 points. Also, check your graphics renderer for the support of OpenGL of at least version 4.3. This can be done with the OpenGL Extensions Viewer Utility. You should also use a computer with an NVIDIA graphics card with at least version 10.2 of CUDA. This can be checked in the NVIDIA control panel. For the Einstar scanner, the manufacturer provides a separate website where you can find all the necessary information and download the software, which is called EXSTAR. When installing the program, it will ask for activation by registering in the Shining 3D service. If the computer does not have an internet connection, offline activation of the product is possible. Next, the device must be calibrated with the dedicated plate with markers. The animated guide will show how to do it. The point is to place the scanner over the plate perpendicularly and at a 30-degree angle on all four sides. If everything is done correctly, the date of the last calibration and its result are recorded. Now it is possible to create a project group, for which you need to create a folder in which files will be saved. It is recommended to take care of available space on your hard drive. Projects take up quite a lot of space. Then we choose a scan mode, in our case it is object, the object size, and alignment mode. There are three options. By features, it is suitable for objects with many elements. By texture, for objects with a rich color palette and hybrid for complex objects. It is suitable for scanning with markers from the kit. Then select the resolution. The lower it is, the longer it will take to process the point cloud, yet will achieve better quality and detail. 
Also, the first and third modes allow enabling textures separately. In the next window, you can enable camera imaging and adjust brightness, the correct level of which is the minimum fill of red for the object displayed by the camera. The adjustment of the working distance is set according to the size of the object. The program recommends enabling the data quality indicator. The indicator itself, or the quality scale, is not affected by this option. It changes the color of the received cloud data to green with the help of chromatography. You can also enable texture flashing and turn on backlighting with a certain frequency. As noted earlier, it is needed to determine the color of the object. We decided to begin testing the Einstar by scanning a figurine of a cat about 10 centimeters high. It is painted wood, has a slightly glossy surface, and is a small object, so to make scanning easier, we placed the figurine on a turntable. As the table we had at our disposal was white, we covered it with a black cloth because the scanner captures light details easily, but we wanted to scan not the platform, but what's on it. The scanner itself we put on a small tabletop tripod, having taken off the silicone cover. To get a better result, we got rid of extraneous light sources. During the scan process, it is necessary to monitor the quality scale. Its indicator should always be near the middle and of green color, but you don't have to always look at the monitor. The LED indicator on the scanner itself will suffice. Paired with the audible beep that the software emits when the tracking is lowered, this functionality makes it much easier to operate the device. If loss of tracking reoccurs, changing the brightness of the light and the working distance can help to solve the problem. After the scanning and initial processing are complete, the tools at the bottom of the window can be used to cut out unnecessary parts of the cloud and irregularities such as here at the bottom of the cloud. Some of the dark areas were not captured, but that does not mean that the model will look like that after processing. Now, let's move to post-processing through the Mesh Model button. Here you can choose to build a mesh. Unwatertight model, where the areas not scanned will remain as holes. Semi-watertight model, those areas will be closed but the model will be hollow. And watertight model, where you can choose the quality of filling in three levels. Before we can optimize the mesh by filtering and smoothing, set the level of removing floating parts and adjust simplification. You can also set the number of polygons or just turn on the recommended parameters and the program itself will choose the optimal settings. As you can see, the area that had not been scanned was filled in automatically, and the model turned out as it should. The next menu will give you access to another level of mesh processing, where you can change the brightness of the textures, simplify the model, optimize the mesh, apply smoothing, remove floating parts, fill holes manually or automatically, select the cutting plane, perform a mirror reflection. The toolkit in the program is vast. If you are satisfied with the result, the model can already be exported in several formats. The software will show the exact dimensions along the axes, and in the same window you can adjust the scale before saving. The last measurement window offers some more tools that may also be useful. Here you can create points, lines and planes on the object, move the model along the axes relative to the zero coordinate point, and rotate it, as well as make measurements on the point set. Next, we tried a more difficult task and scanned a technical part. For this, we took a pump body from a washing machine. The part has a lot of small elements, and to digitize such an object using 3D modeling is not easy. You have to do quite a lot of measurements. That's where 3D scanners come in handy. In this case, we did some scans on a turntable. For certain positions of the model, we use some stands such as calibration cubes. It is desirable to use auxiliary items of black color because the scanner practically does not capture them. After that, we used the feature of automatic alignment of the obtained scans. A total of eight scans were processed. This method also provides a manual mode of alignment according to the selected points. It should be noted that the average power computer was operating at almost 100% load when the video was being prepared. This is the model we got after processing. Obviously, it's not ideal. The scanner didn't capture the smallest elements like holes and threads, as the EinScan SP model with structured light in the visible range could do. The resulting model is not suitable for production, but it will serve to build the geometry when modeling a copy. On this model, we compared the dimensions with the original. The difference was only about two-tenths of a millimeter. We also worked with a bigger part, which is the air intake from a car, or rather the resonator, which inhibits the resonance due to the special shape of the body, but it also serves as the air duct. Some of the scans with the pump body did not align automatically, so this time we put markers on them. Markers help align clouds of scans if the object is complex in shape. Also, last time we were lucky with the color of the object, but this one is black. For this reason, we covered the part with matting spray. Since markers don't hold well on coverage, we glued the markers first and then matted the part. When scanning glare, black, transparent, and other complex surfaces, special sprays that leave a matte film on the object are of good help. After that, it is enough to clean the markers from the spray. Besides, it is easily washed off with water, or as an option, you can use a disappearing spray. Only three scans were enough to scan this part, and thanks to the markers, all the scans were aligned automatically on the first try. To keep the scanner from capturing the table, we slightly lifted the part above the table with boxes. The result was rather impressive. The device did a better job with this part. 
The Einstar uses the well-proven infrared structured light making it safe to digitize a face, bust, or a whole individual, which makes it possible for the device to compete in this mode with the Einscan H, for example. Thanks to the detailed formation of the point cloud, the scanner receives enough accurate data to form an image of the hair as well. There is a special option in the software for this purpose. Let's draw a conclusion. In our opinion, the Shining 3D Einstar is probably the best solution under $1,000 on today's market. It's a versatile device as it can work with both small and large objects. The EX Star software is similar in functionality to the older models of scanners, but it is slightly more basic, which in turn is not worse but easier. At the same time, the user-friendly interface, which is presented as a step-by-step -step workflow, is still there. It is worth noting that all functions, calibration, scanning, post-processing measurements exist within a single interface. For comparison, the manufacturer competitor RevoPoint requires three separate programs to perform the same range of tasks. The quality and accuracy of scanning, of course, is not at the same level as that in the older models EinScan and FreeScan, but it is excellent for getting acquainted with 3D scanning technology and performing tasks not requiring particularly high accuracy, such as scanning people and art objects. And with the tripod and turntable, the device can be used to scan technical objects to use the scan as a reference model for the subsequent reverse engineering. This is Top 3D Shop with the in-depth review of the Shining 3D Einstar 3D Scanner. Subscribe to our channel, leave your comments below, and hit the like button if you enjoyed the video. See you soon!